Asshole, right? More success. Make, make having an aquarium easier to take care of so that you'll want to stick with it longer. It doesn't become as much of a chore. Um, and give you ways to ensure your success, you know, or to, to help. Rich, uh, you know, Rich talked about, you know, safety features and things that he had in there. And, and I really think that's the biggest thing. I mean, people call these things controllers. I, I wish I had a better name, but everybody calls them controllers, but they're in, insurance policies. And, um, and that's really the thing is you're, if you're focusing on the control part, you're focusing on the wrong part. Because for us, it's first insurance and second control. And, and, and so it's less hassle and, and more success is our, our philosophy as a company. Um, you know, we, we want to just completely stay engaged in innovation. Um, and I think Rich also explained when talking about Jim and the, the alkalinity monitor, it's really difficult in this industry because as much as, uh, as, much as the stuff, I'm not saying it's, it's, it's not expensive, it is. It costs a lot of money to be in this hobby and, and we get it. But the number of people that can buy your thing is not very big, right? And so when it comes to innovating, you have to innovate and you have to innovate and then be able to bring it to market um, and, and give it to people and support them and everything else. But we, we do not uh, give up on the innovation part. We, we price our products, we sell our products, everything so that we don't have to give up on that. That we're constantly, you buy our product, there's new stuff coming out. There's new stuff coming out all the time. Um, we try to maintain a level of quality, um, you know, that's fitting. Um, and give customer, you know, customer support. Uh, you know, in, again, in this hobby, we have a type of product that is, it's, it's not a skimmer and blown bubbles. It's, it's a much more complex product. Um, and, uh, and we pride ourselves on giving the best customer so support we possibly can. And then value for your money, you know, in the way that we, we put things together and have multiple things. I'll be talking about the FMM here in, in a minute, where, you know, we, we can sell you one product that does five things now, right, instead of one thing. So. We're always wanting giving, we're not gonna be the cheapest thing around, we never will be, um, but we're gonna have value. So, first thing I'm gonna talk about is uh, the new Apex, okay? This is uh, a big deal for us. It's been a long time, um, the Apex, uh, uh, now the Apex Dean Classic, has been around for seven years. Um, we, it's amazing how much it changed. I'm not gonna go through it here from over that time from what it was in the beginning. How many people got it the first year it was out that are in here? Right, and you guys basically got, for seven years, just crazy amounts of advancements in that product, and that's what we love to do. But 2016, it was time. This 20th year, seven years in the product, it was time for us to bring out a new product. We've been working on it, believe it or not, for a couple of years. Um, there's some funny jokers out there. It's like, oh yeah, they pushed the product to market in three months. Well, I wish I could push a product to market in three months. Um, but it was time to bring it forward. But the first thing I'll talk about is obviously the elephant in the room, okay? which is whenever you bring a new product out to market, there's always something that's gonna bite you. It's just the way it is. This is an incredibly complex product um, and there's a lot of parts in the supply chain. And uh, let's just say we, uh, we didn't have a happy summer, okay? Uh, because we had a small percentage of the ones that went out the door had a flash chip that was not what it was said to be and passed through testing and everything else. And some of our customers got them, and we had to take care of them, and you know, get them changed out, and do the best we possibly can. Um, but we've moved past it now. Uh, oh, this is another thing too. We just found this out, right? You guys heard this a couple days ago. So we're we're not exactly alone in this. Um, Multi-billion-dollar companies have the same issue. Again, luckily for us, we were able to to find a way to identify it in the field. It wasn't cool for some people, and I get it. Um, but you know we're doing the best we possibly can. We're trying to help the customers the best we can. We've moved past it. It's behind us. It's in the rearview mirror, and we're moving the product forward. So we're hoping that you guys are you know in it for the ride with us. Um, those of you guys that are on an Apex Classic at some point, I know you're going to move over. Um, and I'm going to tell you a couple reasons why. So what were some of the advancements that we we came out with uh, in the, in this product? First of all, we. We really upped the game in terms of the amount of processing power, the amount of memory, the amount of things that we needed to have in it so we could continue to innovate, okay? To continue to move forward. Um, you know, the existing Apex Classic works great, um, but there were things like the power monitoring you'll see in a minute that we just, there was no way it was going to happen with the Apex Classic. Um, we put in Wi-Fi into it. It was something that was asked from us time and time and time again. Um, we were seeing, you know, it's, it's Works okay on a, on a wireless bridge. It's complex for people. 
Um, you know, I still will tell a lot of people, like Mark just said, right, that if you can run a wire to the tank, run a wire to the tank. You know, it's not to say that uh, like our Wi-Fi is as best as we could possibly make the Wi-Fi in the product, but at the same time, you're you know you're basically what's in what's out in the air right now, right? What's colliding? What's happening? What's it's one more thing to fail? Um, but we put it in there, it makes it really easy to use. We put a really easy way to set it up and get you started on the Wi-Fi. Um, and we're quite happy with it. I mean, I run Wi-Fi on my tank at home on the 425, and, um, and you, can, you, know, you can run both Wi-Fi and wired if you want as an additional kind of like backup. We put salinity monitoring on board so you don't have to have a PM2 anymore. It's just right there on board. Um, just plug in the probe. Um, it's backward compatible, so if you want to move to the, to the new Apex, everything you already have um, that was an Apex you know, enabled you know, product is going to work on the new Apex. Um, and that was really, really critical for us is not to leave anybody behind. Um, and then for firmware updates, there are one button update now. So you don't have to run another application like you used to in the past. You don't have to um, you know, run a wire you know, 100 feet through your house or something like that for, for some of the people that, that couldn't have wired. It's now one click inside the interface and it updates the AOS, which is Apex operating system. So I'm trying to get away from firmware, so that's it. Um, the other advancements, right? New Energy Bar 832. This is a great product. It really is. We put a lot of advancements in this new Energy Bar. Um, and you know, the aesthetics, uh, I love the aesthetics. I have lots of people who love aesthetics. I know there's a few of you out there who hate the aesthetics. And that's what it is to change and move forward. It means we did it right. Um, <laughs> the, uh, it's got power monitoring on all eight outlets, which is a big deal. I'm going to talk real quickly about that. Uh, it has three one link, it says link, three one link and two DC 24 connections with a 100 volt or 100 watt 24 volt power supply built in. Um, that's a big deal as well, I'm going to show you in a second. Uh, really big advancement. New double junction pH probes and ORP probes, they last longer, they're more accurate. Um, those are included with the new Apex system as well. Some of you guys might have seen this, I've been running this, this for a year and a half or so, this picture. Um, one of the things that we wanted to do was reduce the amount of wires around your tank, right? Let's get rid of some of the power supplies. Let's get rid of some of those things. So what we did when we built the new Apex um, with the energy bar is said, okay, there are products that, that we're going to now start to sell, which with one cable, you can connect them up and reduce that wire clutter. So if you want a power head, we got the wave as we just gave a few of them away. Now you can plug it directly into the 832, no power supply, nothing, just one skinny wire. You want another one? Great, not a problem. You can put that one in. Um, let's say you decide you want to have a dose. Well, it, it, if you run a dose on you know, an existing Apex Classic, you know you run a, a power supply and you gotta run an Aquabus cable to it, right? And you gotta have all, all of those wires. Now you can run that one link to that as well with a cable. So you notice I still haven't used a single outlet on that energy bar, and I've already got you know, my flow in my tank, and I've got dosing of two parts in my tank. We now added another product called a PMA, which is a great product. It's a practical multi-purpose utility pump. Yeah, and spell it backwards. PMA, pump, ooh, yeah. A lot of thought went into that product name, let me tell you. Um, but it's really cool too, because it hooks up to the DC24, um, which is a, a two-pin on-off type DC connection that's on the device. So you can run your, uh, uh, if you've got a calcium, or sorry, a carbon or a GFO uh, reactor you want to run on, or a bio pellet reactor, you can run that. It can run your ATO. Um, I'll talk about that one a little bit more in a second. If you have an AFS, you can put that on. Again, no power supply necessary. That one actually plugs right into the Aquabus, one wire. So you're seeing the theme here, right? Still haven't used a single uh, outlet on the energy bar, right? And I've already got all these devices, you know, connected in here and being monitored. And then I decide, well, you know, maybe you don't want to buy a new product from us that's, let's say, the return pump that we're going to come out with. You want to use a reef octopus pump. Well, that's why we have the Apex ready. And that connects in with the 0 to 10. So now again, you know, you've got, oh, now I'm going to get screwed here. This is the bill. But I'm going to do it like that. So now with the power monitoring, oh man, that was blowing. Blowing, you guys are telling. Oh, I'm gonna have to build it. Oh, I'm gonna have to build it. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. Watch, I'm going to go past it. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We always do our apples, right? <laughs> I like the way you think. I like the way you think. So there's a the reason. Zero to ten, zero to ten. See, that one that was supposed to be a one clicker. That's why. So, ultimately, why does this matter? Again, it, it, it's about reducing the amount of wire clutter, power bricks, right? Those things are in there. You know, there's a ton of them creating heat, everything else under your, your aquarium. I mean, it's, oh man. Better device control, right? Now, this if you have these products connected directly to the 832, you have a great way to control them um, in ways that you might not have otherwise. Um, but really, the really cool thing is everything's in one app. So now everything's all in one place. I can control everything. It's all ready to go. One, one control center. And then you can integrate things. So you can have your pumps and everything work a lot easier with each other. Fail safes. All of these things are now integrated. And again, there's not a single outlet that's used on there. You've got eight. So that's why it's an 832, right? That's where the name came from. And there's 13 outlets, basically, on what used to be just an eight outlet power bar, right? Um, but what's really cool is the power monitoring on the 832. So these are a couple of the tiles that come up. The first one that you can click on shows you, you know, each of these outlets, how many watts and amps they're pulling, and the overall, right? The second one shows you each of the devices and what they're doing. This is really, really cool. Very interesting information, and it's very helpful information to you to understand and understand what something costs to run every day, or when the manufacturer tells you it's only 14 watts and it's 46, you're going to know it. Um, so that's one of the two reasons. Understand what different components cost, but moreover, when they fail, okay? So you, you heard from Mark Callahan that if he had that, he would have known, and he would have been able to shut it off and be able to also get the email address, email alert. Here's my tank, right? This is a scary thing, okay? Um, yeah, that's, that's how much power it uses across the day, right? So in the middle of the day when my highlights and everything are on, um, and what that, was, that gigantic number in the middle that I don't want my wife to ever, 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 ever see um, says is that if my tank ran at that power for 24 hours a day, that's what it would cost. That's what that particular one uh, is in a year, okay? So I'm in California, right? And so I, I helped invent a lot of these features in the product because it's you know anywhere between 26 and 35 cents a kilowatt hour. It's like four times the cost of power anywhere else in the country. So every watt counts. Ma monitoring and managing every watt, every dime, you know, if less, you know, well. <laughs> so you can look also in, at any time and see what it costs you. So I can look, I, I looked at my UV here and I was running UV and I'm like, oh shoot, that's a bucket. That's 30 bucks a month to run UV. I'm like, I can run it half as much and it'll work just as good. <laughs> You know, so it's kind of scary, but at the same time, it makes you make good choices. Good choices for you and your wallet, and good choices for the environment, right? To be able to save some power. Um, the next thing is the, you know, being able to detect when something goes wrong. Believe it or not, this actually happened to me with the product on. I was so, it was cool. You know, you get the email, you're able to go look at the graphs, everything. My skimmer decided to stop working. And if you look at this graph, you'll see, boom, it dropped off, right? And you'll see these little spikes. That's it going. I'm gonna go. Please let me run. And it, please let me run. You know. And in fact, that's what it looked like, right? So my skimmer pump. My I have a reef octopus skimmer with a various pump, right? And it's pretty close to where I put my two part in, so it gets a lot of crap in there. And it just had too much stuff, and the pump wouldn't, you know, start up. And I had to clean it. And I knew that right then and there. So that's a great feature. Really, really cool feature. And it's one of the, the main reasons we. Again, we moved the Apex forward so we could have this feature. Um, next thing to real quickly talk about is, everybody knows that all of these apps and things are coming to uh, aquariums. You guys probably have other products that have apps and whatnot. And everybody wants that, but also, believe it or not, everybody wants it all in one place if they could have it, okay? Um, it's, you know, for us, we want to make that apex the hub, right, for everything that you're doing, so that you can have that. So you can we can fulfill that request from people. Um, and, and again, that's why we built the apex fusion. That's why we put all of these things together to make that happen. But the real driving force too is we're not going to limit you just the products that we make. Okay, there's some people out there, some cynical people are like, oh yeah, 
they're going to stop making the Vortec work because they got their own pump. It's not going to happen, okay? It's, that's just dumb business. Why would I do that, right? Um, so we created something, though, so we could create the, you know, continue to have the quality going forward to you through Apex Ready and have this interoperability of outside our products. It's grown quite a bit. How many people here have Apex Ready products that they plug in through, let's say, 0 to 10, right? A lot of you do, right? It's awesome, right? And so we go and test those things, um, you know, lights, pumps, you know, return pumps, you name it, okay? So here's a few that just came out recently. There's Aquatic Life has a halo light that just came out. It's now been made Apex Ready. Uh, we've got the Reef Bright uh, guys with the, the metal halide, dimmable metal halides, and also the, the Reef Bright strips that are also dimmable. Uh, so that's out there. The Coral View booth as well is also uh, Apex ready. So we're, we're just trying to continue this, this, this thing of pushing more and more products, right? Um, now we've got the G4, right? We've already got this working lab. We haven't released it out in uh, the Apex operating system yet. So how many people here are going to own the G4? You have an Apex? You have a WXM? You're going to be able to run it. That's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. So that's the innovation that I'm talking about. How about this? Any of you guys have these? Anybody? How'd you like to control those and not have to buy a module? Pretty sweet, okay? That's what's also in the next release. Um, so you'll be able to control the AI Prime, you'll be able to control the 52HD, all of it right from our interface, nothing else to buy. How about this? You guys seen this new product? It's coming out, the Ethereal? Anybody? Yeah. This is a cool new light from MaxSpec. Uh, and uh, it, again, it's obviously over there in, the, in, in, our, uh, in our show. Um, but this is a product we're bringing forward, this new standard we've been working on called IOTA, which stands for Internet of Things Aquariums. Just so you know, this is basically the way for you to bring together all of these disparate Wi-Fi devices that have different apps. Um, no additional module to buy, but you do have to have the new Apex to make it work. Again, these are a couple of the new features that we're trying to bring forward that require this extra horsepower. So, Internet of Things aquariums. You guys, any of you familiar with Internet of Things? All these devices, look, I got an egg thing that tells me when I need to get eggs, right? And quite frankly, uh, in the general world, this isn't even working well at all, okay? Because there's, they're all different companies, and there's not one company, really, that's really acting as the hub that I'm talking about. That's what we're trying to do with already with Apex Ready, and now ongoing with the IOTA. So, you know, again, you're, you're used to seeing all these lights, right? And each one has their own separate app that you gotta go in and use. What if they could just make their light uh, hit one button and it's part of the IOTA standard, okay? And that's what we get, have with the Mac spec here. The Mac spec, you basically set it up, you connect it on your home network, right? Once you connect it up on the home network, you pop it into IOTA mode, okay? Then your Apex goes, oh, okay, I guess you wanna, you know, now control you know, this max spec light, and all of a sudden you're controlling it. You don't have to wait for an update, you don't have to wonder which way, where it is, you're swiping through your phone, you're like, oh my gosh, I wanna put my light, yeah. You don't have to do it anymore, all right there, right inside the gate They get to decide if they wanna implement it or not, um, we get it in and test it. software to buy um, and hopefully you'll see a lot of new devices over the next year are starting to use this standard um, and make it really easy for you to make buying decisions too on the products that do that because it is going to make it cheaper and easier for you to run these products. Don't know who's going to do the next one. I'll give a question at the end. I don't know who's going to do the next one. Um, we've got it out there to other companies and we'll see. We'll see where it goes. So how about new products? Yeah. Anybody want to hear about new products? Yeah. Well, it's a little anticlimactic because you've heard of some of these before. Yes, I'll take the ribbing. So, we've got the, the PMUP, okay? So the PMUP is a practical, multi-purpose utility pump. This is gonna be a great, if you get the new Apex, this is a great thing to have right out of the gate. Um, I actually had one of these in, in testing for 18 months on an innovative marine 10-gallon uh, tank uh, in my office, an awesome LPS tank that I have with Scolies and just gorgeous stuff. And it ran in the back there for 18 months. I never pulled it out and never cleaned it. And if you've ever seen what gets in the back of an all-in-one, this is a great pump because it survived 18 months before I finally took it out, inspected it, and threw a new one in because I wasn't gonna risk it anymore. 
but I mean, it was running in the worst environment possible, but we really want people to use it for ATO, first and foremost, because it's a great ATO pump. It's great for reactors, water transfers. Um, it's got a vertical pickup design, um, so when you drop it in, it's gonna pick up right out of the bottom. It's about 100 gallons per hour. It's not meant to be a huge flow pump. It's not what it's for, right? Um, but it's got pretty good head pressure, so you can put it on the bottom floor of your house or under your house where your water is, and push the water up for your ATO. And it connects if you've got a one link with waves or you've got uh, an 832, it's just gonna plug right in, switch it on and off just like any other outlet. Um, and we will have a, a version with a 24 volt power supply too, so if you don't, should be out here in just a couple months with the power supply. But the pump right now is available, $9.95, it's a great price. So, what's new again? Being pummeled everywhere, like where's the FMM? There's two products we talked about. Um, but quite frankly, when we got to the end of the year and we're working on uh, the core and the FMM specifically, and realized that we really needed to push forward the new Apex stuff, and because of that. Um, but now, <laughs> now it's ready to, to go here in just a short time this year. Uh, the FMM, and we've got some changes that we did to it too, so it, it's not gonna be all a repeat. Obviously, the FMM is for monitoring fluids. We've got flow sensors that we've got on display over there that you'll be able to see on a really cool like scientific thing, you know, like exploratorium where you can turn valves and whatnot and watch the output. So after you leave here today, you can go over there and try it out. Um, we got it all the way down to quarter inch sensors. If you want to put it on the input for your RO, you could do that. Um, we have optical water level sensors uh, that are available uh, for it, and we've got leak detection probes. So you can plug all of these things into each and every one of those. Um, and there'll be future sensors, I'm, I'm sure, as well. Now, we're going to be selling an ATO kit. So this is new, right? Um, eight, doing auto top off is, uh, is a tricky thing, right? Uh, because you want it to have a lot of fail-safes. And so in putting it together, we, we tried to put together as much fail-safe into this as we can. Um, so first and foremost, you take the FMM, you plug it into Aquabus, you plug the optical connection into the first one, you plug the optical connection into the second one, okay? And then, right here, this is where you can plug in that PMUP. So now you plug that PMUP in directly into the FMM. Pretty cool, huh? So now, even if you have an Apex Classic, you don't have a one link, you don't have the, the new one with the 832, all of you doubters like, oh, I'm gonna leave me behind. Oh, they just don't care about me. Oh, the new products, oh. Oh my gosh, I heard so much of that. It's not true, right? I wanna sell stuff, okay, come on, darr. I mean, I, I wanna sell you guys product and make you guys more successful. So we put the access report on here so that you can run a PEMA, or you can run a solenoid valve, which I'm planning to push out too, if you wanted to run it to your RO or something like that. Um, and then of course the power supply connection, there's a, a power supply that comes with it uh, to run the, the PEMA. Now the float valve that you see there, you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, that's an old school, like why did they put this you know, float valve on here? I did that in like, I don't know, 1999 or something. Um, well, the reason for that is, is that we've got two optical sensors on there, which is a great backup, but they're electronic, right? And electronics fail, right? People turn on their pump, you know, manually or who knows what. And so what the float valves does is the water comes in above the water line, and should those electronic uh, sensors fail, it's gonna shut off the water for you, and you're already gonna get an alert, you know, that the sensors failed, et cetera, et cetera. So um, it's, it's a way for us to give as much security as we can, we think, into an ATO. Um, anyway, what do you guys think of the, the ATO kit? Is that something you guys would enjoy having? Yeah, it's got an audible alert in it too. Um, and of course, you've got two extra sensors there. You can put leak detectors or a flow sensor and the extra two sensors. Um, it connects up to Aquabus. If you've got any Apex, it's gonna work with it. But it's going to run standalone too. So if you happen to have another tank that you don't have an Apex on, or somebody else that doesn't have, want to have an Apex yet, you'll be able to just plug this in, put it at the water level you want, and walk away. 
and it's going to automatically, you know, adjust your, your water out of your vessel or whatever happens to be. So that's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. I thought so. And it's kind of a new thing for us creating, you know, standalone products, right? Um, but it, it made sense. We're listening to the customers. I mean, it really comes down to that. So, this, well, maybe not. So, um, the, the core, right? You guys are going to beat me up on this one, right? Because we did. We started on it. We weren't seeing the performance and other things that we wanted. We we're going to have to work really hard into 2016 on it. And at the same time, it was going to be killing the new Apex development. And we're like, we're going to put it on hold. We'll get back to it in, you know, spring, you know, when we can, when we can hit it again. Um, so, guess what? There's now a core. It's showing off in the booth. It's actually quieter than the one that we were developing before. We made some major changes to the way that the architecture works. There's two models available. It's probably 30% smaller than it was before without compromising the flow. There's two models. There's the Core 15. Um, single cable plugs into one link. It's powered by one link. Um, so you don't need an extra power brick for it. Uh, so if you have an 832 or a one link module with you know, say your wave pumps, it's gonna work. Uh, it uses less than 50 watts, which is, again, I'm that miser on the electricity. Um, at zero head, it's going to do 1,500 gallons per hour at 50 watts, which is pretty amazing. It's, you know, pretty good performance. Um, but nobody runs anything zero head. That's like a joke of a, you know, of a, 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 of a factor. So really what, it, what you want to look at is what's it going to be at six foot. Um, and it's just about 1,000 gallons per hour at six foot with 50 watts, which is really, really cool. Me too. And, oh yeah, it's gonna work with your existing Apex. What do you know about that? How about the Core 20, okay? Uh, you know, physically sized, same size pump physically. Um, this particular pump uses less than 100 watts. It moves about 2,000 gallons per hour at zero head, about 1,100 to 1,200 gallons an hour at six feet ahead. Um, works with the new Apex, again. Wow, amazing, right? But it runs standalone. Huh? Anybody gonna want to run this one? Even without an Apex? Yeah. Pretty cool? Yeah, pretty cool. Oh man, no more raffles. <laughs> man, the crowd is rough. The champagne has stopped flowing. The breakfast burritos are setting in. Got down here in front, the guy's from Florida, you know. Yeah, look at you. I know you, you're the one that falls asleep all the time, man. I know you. I know you. That's right. So if he does, I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to hold the rap and be quiet. And I'm going to pull his number. All right. Anyway, uh, but this is going to be a great product. It's really awesome. It's in the booth. It's running in the booth. Um, and uh, it's definitely something I know every one of you have been asking about and wanting to run. And it's really cool. But now it's time for another raffle. Okay. Well, maybe. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see.